Thank you pages are a powerful marketing resource, but creating more than just a few of them at a time can be a massive pain. So in this video, I'm going to show you how using your existing tool stack, you can create dynamically generated thank you pages that have a massive amount of flexibility. This works for bricks, oxygen, generate press, pretty much anything under the sun. As long as you have a decently capable form builder plugin like Gravity Forms or Fluent Forms, this is going to work for you. So I've set up a little demo site here, and the idea is that this website is for people to sign up for events. So you might need to deliver a PDF or some kind of asset to them after they sign up. But this actually came about for me in a real client scenario where my client had 60 different posts and all of them had a unique piece of gated content. So of course I didn't want to manually go through and create 60 individual thank you pages. What I did was build this solution that I'm going to show you here in a moment to dynamically show that thank you page. Now, the way that we're gonna go about this still will show up in your analytics. So of course, the whole idea of thank you pages is to understand how many people actually make it to that point. So of course, you can track your marketing objectives and that's still going to take place here. So what I've done in this particular example is set up this little events calendar using the plugin I co-developed called PyCalendar. And on this is some sample posts. So let's say you have like a member's party and a team training session, and both of these need some kind of way to protect the content until the user has signed up. So if we were to click on one of them and go to the single post, you can see I just have a simple, simple template here. And with that, there is a gravity form on the page. So what should happen when you fill out this form is that it takes you to a thank you page. Now, of course, in something like Gravity Forms, you can set up a redirect to take you somewhere else, but that's not really what we want because you would still have to create those multiple thank you pages. So what we're going to do is actually set up Gravity Forms to just simply reload this page and attach a query string to it. That achieves the ability, like I just said, for the analytics to show exactly what page that user landed on. But not only that, more importantly, all of this will be handled from your template, so you don't have to create this more than once. You simply set it up in your template and we can show and hide it dynamically. So let me go ahead and open my single post template here. And if we take a look, we can see I just have a very simple container set up here with the grid. I have the dynamic post title and content, and then Gravity Forms for whatever reason isn't loading in the back end, but that's no big deal because obviously we saw it's working on the front end. So what you might want to do is create another container here. And let's just say we're gonna pop in, you know, a headline uh, element and we'll just say something like, here's your ticket or whatever is relevant. Here's your asset, something like that. Then we could just add in a simple piece of text. And then maybe we want to do a button and this button is going to be, you know, download. In this case, because we're gonna be delivering some kind of PDF piece of content, this is what we're going to roll with. Now on this container here, this is where half of the magic of this particular tutorial is going to come in. So what we're going to do is using the block visibility plugin, I'm going to add a query string parameter to this container. If you're not familiar with block visibility and what I'm talking about here, go check out my other video called membership plugin alternative. It's going to give you the lowdown on block visibility. But if you're using oxygen or bricks, you of course have query strings and conditions built right in. So this is going to work the same, just a little bit different in terms of UI. So we'll click the query string and here we can name this query string anything we want. So we could say, you know, gated equals show or anything. It could be, you know, hidden equals show, something like that. So we're just going to go with gated equals show. Now, if we update this and we go look at this team training session, we're going to refresh and that new content is not there until we add the query string. The other thing I want to do here is on my single template, I want to make this content go away whenever that form is submitted. So what I'm going to do is expand these content areas and I'm actually going to go ahead and copy this headline again. So then that way it still has the headline when we set these other elements to disabled. So with this grid, I could just say visibility query string, then we're going to scroll down to required queries is not. And then we said gated equals show. So now this is going to do the opposite. If this query is present, then it's going to hide this grid and its contents. If it's present, then it is going to show this container here. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So the next part of this is going to configure our gravity form. So what we're going to do is go to forms 
then we're going to go to register and for our confirmations this is where the final part of the magic of this particular strategy actually kicks in so if we go to edit here then you can see you obviously have the page redirect but you're not going to be able to dynamically pick the post that the user was on from this list so all we need to do is go to the redirect setting here and you'll notice in the redirect URL, you don't actually have the ability to pop in the merge tag as Gravity Form calls it. So all we need to do is scroll down and go to embed URL. We're simply going to take this and pop it in the redirect URL field. And then what we can do is pass along our query string. So we said gated equals show was our required query. So we'll save that. And now let's go take a look on the front end, we'll go back to one of our posts here. And when we submit, we'll just say Jonathan and pop in my email and submit this form. And then as you can see, what it's going to do is append that query string to the page. It's so seamless because the page does actually reload, but then you're going to see here is your asset. The original part of this particular post is now hidden and we can deliver this asset most likely via an ACF field. Now, the benefit of this is that these are dynamic and using something like an ACF field, you can change what content is actually delivered. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, all we would need to do is go set up a simple ACF field. So we'll go ahead and just call this field group something like gated content. Uh, our field here can just be, you know, gated asset link. A simple text field will be totally fine. Then we would set this to a post type is equal to event because that's our post type. So we could save that then for one of our events. So then whatever the link to your content is, I could just stick, you know, a URL in here, like for my media library, I could update that. Then in my, uh, my template for my single post, I could then just come down to my button here and just link the dynamic data. So we're going to go to enable dynamic data, current post, then the content source, you could dynamically set that as your button text, but in this case, we're gonna go to link source and post meta, and then our link there was gated asset link. So now when I update this, if we go back to the team training session and we refresh this, I can now submit the form again. And when I click the button, it's now going to take me to that media library item that I linked the button to for that particular post. So again, just to demonstrate, if I went and took a URL and pasted it in for the members party down here, updated that, then when visitors register on the front end, it's going to take them to that URL for this particular post, while the other one for our team training session is still unaffected. And of course, remember, this is all handled through your template. So of course, the beauty of this approach is this is all handled via your template and one URL query parameter. So if you need to make a change to this, you can go do it in one place and it applies to all of your thank you pages everywhere they exist. This can apply to certain posts or entire post types. This has a very broad range of use cases and examples. And for me, this saved me having to go create 60 individual thank you pages. So I'm sure for you, whether this helps you right now or in the future, I hope it sparks the idea and helps you level up your dynamic content game. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I was utilizing my plugin called Pi calendar to demo this. So if you want to learn more on that, click the link in the description. Or if you want to learn more about Generate Press and Generate Blocks, you can click the link in the description to be taken to my Generate course. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video.